Hello and welcome to NCTV episode 25 on the topic of understanding chronic pain. So the first thing you need to understand about chronic pain is that it changes lives, impacts self-image, affects others and interrupts plans. The NHS defines it as persistent pain that carries on for longer than 12 weeks despite medication or treatment. It's a disease that sometimes a person living with doesn't understand and others don't always accept, especially for example uh, when someone is bedridden one day but unimpaired the next, which can obviously be difficult to explain to others. It can hinder you from activities you enjoy and reduce your ability to take part in routine tasks, so it's normal to feel angry about it. However, understanding and accepting it's chronic pain itself can take you from the why me to what now, which is a powerful step towards gaining control over your body and your life again. So to break it down, firstly, pain is there to warn you that something is wrong, for example, an infection or illness, or to protect you from an injury. Chronic pain can also develop slowly, sometimes for no obvious reason, and it may also come on several months or years after an activity or injury, like a car, car crash or surgery. It can be felt either in a specific part of the body or throughout the whole body. So the pain uh, may be continuous or vary in its intensity too. Sometimes it can flare up or get worse very quickly, while other times it may be easier to manage. It can also have other symptoms like numbness, burning or piercing. Chronic pain traditionally has been very hard to manage and as there's no specific muscle or tissue damage and it's often, it often doesn't really respond to normal treatments, hence the frustration it causes to its sufferers. It's like the body's nervous system being on red alert. The nerves become so sensitive that they send pain messages for even the slightest touch or movement, or in some cases for no reason at all. The biopsychosocial model uh, for pain explains that no two people or their pain are alike. Each individual's chronic pain is made up of a combination of their bio, psycho and social situations. Bio, biological, means from the body. Psycho, psychological, means from the mind, emotions and feelings. And social, being from the environment in which they live or have lived. All of these components will influence your pain and how you're able to cope with it. Whether there is an injury or tissue damage, or in this case chronic pain, a pain signal is sent out to the body and what happens next depends on you and the following five things. One, your thoughts and how the pain signal is perceived. For example, general aches and pains in the body or stiffness may be seen as a good pain when these are after exercise, whereas they may be bad pain when related to a medical condition like rheumatoid arthritis or fibromyalgia. In a person having had an experience in the past, be it abuse or an accident, possibly an injury whilst on military duty, any time the person experiences pain, it can then elicit thoughts of the past experience, uh, which can then make the current pain much worse, even though the pain may be completely different and unrelated. Two, emotions. The emotional aspect of pain is a person's response to their thoughts about the pain. If you believe that the pain is a serious threat, for example, a tumour, then emotional responses will incur fear, depression, anxiety, and possibly panic among others. However, if you believe pain not to be a threat, then the emotional response will be negligible. Your emotional state at the time the pain develops may also influence the outcome. People experiencing severe stress at the time of developing chronic pain often battle to manage that pain due to the attachment it has with the certain time that they experienced it in their life. Dealing with the emotional issue will be as important as managing the pain in order to recover. Three, suffering. The word suffering is often interchanged with pain, even though it can be very different. For instance, a broken bone may cause pain without suffering, 
since the person knows that the pain is not deadly and the bone will heal. In contrast, bone pain due to a tumour may cause the same pain as a break, but the suffering will be much greater due to the meaning behind the pain, so this tumour could be life-threatening. Therefore, the degree in which a person suffers is often closely tied to their emotional connection with the pain. Four, pain behaviours. Pain behaviour is your physical reaction to pain, what you do. These are behaviours that others observe as typically indicating pain, such as talking about the pain, grimacing, limping, moving slowly, and taking medicine. How you physically react to pain can, affect, can be affected by previous life experiences, expectations, and cultural influences in terms of how the pain is expressed. Interestingly, pain behaviours are also affected by the outside environment, such as how others respond to you. How much sympathy and help you have around you may influence how much, or how little even, that you do on a bad day. Five, outside environment. Your environment, including your home, where you work and play, or socialise even, will also influence your response to pain and how you're able to cope with it. You may not have had a choice but to go to work for fear of losing your job and being unable to support your family. If you don't collect the children from school, who will? Friends encouraging you to join them for the rugby and a beer down the pub may seem like a challenge, but getting out and having a laugh with them is good for your emotional well-being and a balance in life. Your experience of pain always stays with you. There is a kind of memory to it. If you experience pain every time you carry out a certain task or activity, then it's unlikely that you'll continue with it, and so you'll develop a no-go list of activities. Thinking of the pain before it happens may also make it feel worse. If you are anxious or tense about doing something, certain activity, hormones in your body can affect your perception of pain and often making it more sensitive. Likewise, if you do enjoy doing something, then hormones called endorphins, the feel-good chemical, can be released and make it a more enjoyable experience and possibly less painful for you too. So there you have it, this week's bite-sized bit to help your health flourish. Hopefully that has increased your understanding and awareness of chronic pain. And as you can tell by this being the longest NCTV to date, there's a lot to it. So be sure to look out for a future episode which will provide the necessary guidance and skills on how to cope with chronic pain. Bye bye for now.